Hey everyone, this is Bob Pompiani and you're listening to Chase and Birdies. Welcome back y'all to another episode of Chasing Birdies and we are here doing this damn thing, my man. How are you? I'm doing great, my man. I mean, we had an eventful Super Bowl, which we'll get into uh, here yeah. shortly about all our bets. I had a lot going on, man. I needed a, f- a freaking accountant uh, <laughs> for the, the number of bets I had going on, but I'll let you know what I did. We can hear what you did, but keep in mind today's episode is brought to you by Lynx Brewing. Um, it's starting to spread, bud. It's starting to get in more and more places. I might consider myself a sales rep now for Lynx Brewing. JB, Matt Moan, uh, Jeff, and us, we're, we're taking over... Maybe Western PA one beer at a time, potentially. I don't know, but it's exciting times. Yeah. So I'm really stoked for that. So, Bud, tell me about your Super Bowl bets. I mean, the Kansas City Chiefs versus Philly Eagles. Everybody thought it was going to be 37 34. It was pretty damn close. That, dude, that was wild. Like, you told me that. I didn't even hear about that, about this whole leak thing of this script. And I'm all, you know, me initially, I was all in on the Chiefs, you know? And, yeah. um, and you send me that that link about what Arian Foster said about this bullshit script, which I, I thought was bullshit. But I start thinking, I'm like, damn, man, maybe maybe there is a, a something out there. But I stay true to my word. Did I not? I told you. I mm-hmm. told you. Mm-hmm. I said, you know what? At the end of the day, I think the Chiefs are going to do it. I didn't really think that the Eagles would get blown out. And I also... I don't know. It, for me, it was just the experience that the Chiefs had surrounding them in the moment. Big game. Uh, granted, Mahomes was hurt, but um, I didn't. I didn't place any prop bets, dude. You know, I just go straight I, I up got, on. I got involved in those, bud. Yeah, you were you were betting on the score because of the damn simulation. <laughs> but um, that that call, I don't like it, man. I, I don't like that call. Uh, with less than two minutes left in the Super Bowl, uh, that that's hard for me to. Get, a, get that to be a hold on Juju right there. And um, I just don't like that call. I think you put the whistles away. Now, if there's something where you push the freaking guy out of the way so he can't get the ball, I get that. Yeah, but that, but, that ticky-tack, bud? I know, but the the DB, he admitted it. He said, you know what, grab the, grab the jersey. It was, it was the right call. It was a big call in a big moment, which, again, does that change the outcome of a game? I don't know. Mm-hmm. Um, but that was a big call in a big moment, and it was the right call. But... Um, I, 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 mean, I was bud, a little nervous. To ha- away. What? Put the whistles away, bud. But like, no, they got to use whistles. I tell you what, Scottsdale this past week was fucking buzzing, mm-hmm. eh? Oh, I mean, God, you had the waste man. management going on. The Scotty guy, Scheffler. That was the like, guy that was running down 17 fairway, belly flops into the lake, swims over the waste management logo, gets up on it, does a little dance, uh-huh. and then he he. It was hilarious to watch it because the cops were laughing while he was swimming because, like, we all know where you're going, bud. All right, you're going to the slammer. But <laughs> that place is wild. That I was mean, nuts. Big Dick I mean, Rick had a hole in one. A hole on in Sunday one for the man. On yep. seven, uh, I think 215 yards, little ace. Um, our boy Scovey yeah. had a really cool uh, interaction there and then um, that we posted. And then it went into the Super Bowl, bud. I mean, in Scottsdale, like tap in and get to the Super Bowl. So, yeah, no, really that, cool to watch. And that whole thing with Joe and Tom Kim, man, that was just like perfect. And yeah, and past guest of the show, great episode that we had there with Joe a couple of weeks ago, months ago. But seeing that interaction firsthand, man, that's just so cool. So my my prop bets, bud. Oh yeah, let me hear about them. Can we get can we get into that? So um, right out of the gate, the Chiefs decided to not take the ball, which completely screwed me because I had Kelsey at plus five fifty and McKinnon at plus one thousand to score first. I figure one of those two, a little dump down in McKinnon, or Kelsey's Kelsey. Well, they you know did not take the ball, and then Kelsey p- proceeded to score on the first play yeah. of their drive. Chiefs to win by one to six points plus three hundred. Took that. Oh, that was a good that. bet. Travis Kelsey, over under 80 and a half yards. I took the over. He got 81. Oh, my God. Uh, McKinnon, three and a half was the line for catches. I lost that one. He had three. 
I mean, I was screaming the fourth quarter, but our buddy Neil Walker and I, we were screaming for him to get the fourth freaking catch. Just a little dump down to the guy. <laughs> were you with Neil? No. I obviously took the, the Chiefs, took the over. I'll tell you what, bud. It makes sense now that you why you have a nice Danish and a, a, a large cup of coffee from Starbucks. But you got, you got a little more jingle in your bank today than yesterday, bud. Well, I'm like made it. up for the losses that I've had, but... Uh, it was good, dude. I, I was really, really satisfied with the one to six, win by one to six plus 300. I like that. Well, that's, I mean, one to six, they were plus one, minus 110 if you bet them. So one to six is no brainer. Plus whatever. Yeah. Like, you know, I, just do your research, people. Just do your research. I'm glad you did that, man. And to speaking about a little extra jingle in your pocket, but it looks like you're at Nemecolon. Which allows that to happen for some people. Yes. Uh, Nemacolon.com. Check them out. Great spot to take the family, friends. Phenomenal golf coming here, people, right around the corner. Mystic Rock, Shepherd's Rock. Uh, all around great spot. And we got some venues and events planned up there this summer with the Jason Birdie Boys and Nemacolon, mm-hmm. some of our country boys, but uh, we won't get in too much about that. You know, we're talking about sports. You know, we opened this segment up. We're talking about sports. We love sports. And uh, our guest today on Chasing Birdies, my man, he loves sports like no other. He is a legend, sports broadcaster of the year in 2022. Uh, and so for us to have him here on Chasing Birdies exemplifies what we're doing here on the podcast with people who are chasing birdies in life. And my man, Bob Pompiani, does it well. Yeah, he he and I have had some good times at Nemecol. And so it's fun, you know, it's good that we just talked about Nemecol. And I mean, I, Bobby, Bobo and I, We've gone late into the hours at Nemecolon, and, and I always enjoy the time with him. Uh, again, absolute legend in Pittsburgh. I mean, we grew up watching the guy, but on the news. I know, but I the mean, voice. Now we're interviewing him. Like it was pretty yeah. cool. Yeah, two um, amateurs and a pro. What's up? Although he did, uh, <laughs> he did bail on us, but I mean, he was 15 minutes late to the tee. He was okay. Couldn't figure out the system. 15 yep. minutes late to the tee. Two shot penalty. All right. Then we go. We're we're having a nice little interview, and then the guy goes. Hey guys, I gotta go. You gotta run. I, I gotta get on air. So, uh, the good thing is, is Bobo is uh, you know owes us a little mulligan. So we'll we'll take him up on that. Maybe do the next one in person. Um, yeah, we'll but let's him. roll it into Bob Pompiani, KDK. All right, all right, guys. Thanks for joining us here on another episode of Chasing Birdies. And today, Pep, I got to tell you, I'm a little bit, I'm a little humbled. I'm a little honored. I mean, you and I are amateur golfers. We're, we're mm-hmm. amateur podcasters. We think we're professionals, but we are dealing with a professional in broadcasting, a Pittsburgh legend. Glad you said that and not professional golfer because Peppy knows I'm not. <laughs> <laughs> well, you can recognize the voice, people. Mr. Bob Pompiani here on Chasing Birdies. My man, it's, uh, it's good to see you finally. You know, it's nice to see you guys. I was happy to see you over the holiday a little bit, and that was fun. It um, was fun. And I've been chasing birdies my entire life. I've been chasing a lot of things, but birdies are on the list, and I haven't really had too many. And I need to figure out how to get more. Well, we'll, <sighs> we'll get into that the, the whole golf thing. Um, like Ryan said, you're a legend in Pittsburgh. I mean, again, I was thinking the other day, when the hell did I first meet him? 1996 or 1997, when Kristen Pepe got. What's the word called? Extra effort award. Extra effort award yeah. for Kristen Peppy. And She's great. Um, actually, I might have to dig that photo up so that we can post on our social media of that. I mean, I got my pants hacked up to my nipples. I got a woven belt <laughs> that's too long <laughs> hanging off to the edge. And that's when I first met you. And, and I feel like I've known you ever since because you're in our homes. Um, so for you, being oh, in this industry... When did it all start for you? I mean, you've been in it forever. Yeah, 40 years, John, it's, it's 40 years. You know, it's a long yeah. time, and it doesn't seem like it's been 40 years, but my, I'll make it short for you. My whole story is about golf, actually, golf and baseball. When I was in high school, I went to Hopewell High School, and um, like every young kid, I wanted to have a, a sports uh, career in something. That's what I wanted to do. And and so I was I was in pretty good in golf. My brother and I both were on the Hopewell golf team. One and two guys, you know, since then, his both of his nephews have won WPIL golf championships and they went on for scholarship golf in school and they made, you know, which is great. But um, but when I was 17, play baseball, play uh, golf. And uh, then I had news about my heart 
was giving me some issues and it was like a murmur, which I didn't understand why I got. Turns out I had rheumatic heart disease through a strep throat and it affected my aortic valve in my heart. Oh. So I've had two open heart surgeries, the first of which when I was 17 and a half. And, you know, when they tear up in your uh, sternum, uh, rip it out, oh. and surgery, put it back together, it does affect your golf swing. So I've been trying to use that in a way to get strokes over the years. It still bothers me at times. Um, but when that happened, I knew that I couldn't do this and, uh, I couldn't, you know, pursue golf or anything else for that matter. And it was tough when you're 17 years old and, and you find out that your dreams are derailed a little bit, mm -hmm. you got to figure out what to do next. My mom and dad were great about this because somehow they convinced me that, uh, this is maybe God's way of saying you aren't going to be a good golfer, so you need to find something else. And I did, I found sports cause I wanted to be in sports and I started to work hard at doing this kind of stuff, uh, in high school, actually play-by-play play at WBVP, WMBA, two local uh, stations yeah. in Beaver County. And I did anything I could to, to try to get as much experience as I could. And it led to opportunities to go to school for it, got an internship at KDK, and I've never left. <laughs> so 40 years later, I'm still here. It's crazy. Yeah. I mean, like I said, it's it's a staple in everyone's household in Pittsburgh is the voice of Bob Pompiani. You know what, Bob? I'm going to give you a compliment here, so take it and run with it. You know, you have an incredible voice. And it is so distinguished. You know, you can distinguish that when it's on, on, on the radio, on TV. But you're a good-looking man. You know, most people who have a good voice are not meant oh, for but. Uh, TV. And my man Bob dresses to a T, and, and he looks good doing it. So, uh, Well, I appreciate off. that, John. That's nice of you to say. I, I don't know. I, I use more makeup now than I ever have because <laughs> I have to. I feel like Tammy Faye Baker, I tell people sometimes, because you've got to chisel it off at the end of the day. I used to have people here who did it for us. We don't anymore. So now my wife will sometimes text me and say, what have you done? I said, I don't know. Maybe I went overboard on the blush today. I don't know. I'm trying to make myself look younger. It's hard to do. Um, but no, I appreciate that. And anyways, for me, this has like been fun. Um, I just enjoy doing it. Uh, yeah. Ryan, I know Jeff. Uh, mm -hmm. saying, I'm sure he feels the same way over at WTAE. He used to be here with us forever. And um, Yeah. Yeah. You know, I mean, it, it, you're kind of in a, a situation where you just – Appreciate what you have, you know, and, and I tell people that all the time. Work hard at it, and if you do it well enough, you can make a career at it. And, you know, I get to do a lot of things that people would love to do, and I'm always very, very much mindful of that because it could change at any time. And I've uh, – so I, I run scared sometimes, you know. You, yeah, I think that's a good way to go when you feel like there's pressure, especially from younger people who want to do this. 100%. Right, because if if, if you're not looking over your shoulder, then what are you doing? You get comfortable, and, and, and you don't right. work hard. And you're still working hard. Um, for you, I mean, you've seen I, – I, you haven't seen a World Series while you've been commenting. Comment no, but, well, that's true. Not as not as a broadcaster. Right. That has but, to change. But Stanley, Hopefully before I'm done with this, we do see one. I don't know if that's in the cards, but I hope so. Stanley Cups, more years. Super Bowls. I mean, you've seen a lot in the sports world. Highs, lows of the – you've definitely seen the highs and lows of the hockey. Mm -hmm. uh, and because in the early 80s, they stunk. I mean, they were terrible, and then they got Lemieux, and then they got Sid, and and here we are. Um, and I've gotten to see you a lot at the you know the Mario Lemieux Invitational, which I wish they would bring it back just so, so I could see I. your show that you so put. So do on. I. <laughs> Could you? <laughs> some imagine? of the best, some of the best moments. Uh, Pepe will attest to this. Uh, <laughs> are on the nights after the rounds of golf and the parties, and but also the the great thing about that, and the great thing about Lemieux is that he did it knowing that he would raise a lot of money. He had the platform to do it. People would come to him and uh, have fun in the process. What better way of doing it? This is why I like golf tournaments are great because I've been doing mine for 31 years at Chartier's Country Club where we raise money for mentally challenged kids. And you, you get to do that while having a good time. So you serve both, you know. You, you spend some money, sure, but you're giving it to a good cause, plus you're having fun. What's a better way of What's uh, better? to a charity than that? So golf's great for that. And I wish it was come back. I always tell Mario, it's time. You got to bring it back. But I don't. I don't think he's going to budge. Yeah, that was a good one up there, in Nemecolin. Um, you know, when that whole thing was happening, and I, I could only imagine now what it would be like at the after party with you doing a TikTok video or some some type of. <laughs> we didn't have TikTok back there. I, I know, but now it would yeah. be. It would. Well, be you have to be very careful these days. That's one thing I found out about these cameras. You know, <laughs> back even back in 1990s or whenever this thing started, uh, John, you'll remember. Some things happen there that are meant not to be shown to anyone else, and that's right. just the way it is. We were all having a good time. You do things, and nothing crazy I'm not talking mm -hmm. about, but just, you know, you tell jokes, you have fun, you laugh, you, you know. 
but to, you know, if you recorded some of that back then, you probably would say, whoa, no, 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 don't, not so fast. Don't show that to anyone. But well, I would I like to do a TikTok uh, up at one of those events. I'd like to get, that would be fun to do. I have a funny story that, I, I mean, God rest his soul, um, Clark Gillies. And we're sitting around. It's um, me, uh, James Neal, uh, Mr. 1980 Olympic goal scorer. Mikey Ruzioni. Mikey Ruzioni. One of the best joke tellers there is. I mean, he had red lipstick on that's been <laughs> on for the last three days because of the red wine. And uh, Mario sitting there chirping, chirping him how he's only scored one goal. But I will never forget. It, it was two thirty in the morning. We are sitting there at this at this round table, and we're in Out Falling Rock. Out on the back. Rock. You're talking about at Nemecolin? Yeah, at, at Falling Rock. At back at Falling Rock. It's beautiful out there. And well, at then 2.30 in the morning, it's really pretty. We're inside, and Clark Gilly starts playing the piano at 2.30 in the morning, singing. And Eurizioni, you know him and his Boston accent, is just chirping him, making fun of him. It was so funny. And, you know, everybody loved it. It was, like you said, there's things that... Nowadays, that'd be on social media and that'd be spreading and, and not right. necessarily wanted to be. But it's a story. It's hilarious because Clark Gillies was one of the funniest guys. And unfortunately, he's passed away uh, over the last couple of months to, to cancer, which is awful. He um, and Mike but, Bossy within a month or two or whatever. Crazy. Know, close it was. But Both he on was the same line with Trottier. Such a blast. Day. Yeah. I mean, yeah, he was it, great. He used to do a great Kenny Rogers, if you remember that. He loved the live mic on karaoke night. You look at the Lemieux event, though. He had Michael Phelps. He had the Ric Flairs. He had the Dan Marinos, Michael Jordans, all at this event, and they all came because of Mario Lemieux and in his cause. So, like you said, I mean that that week was incredible. I, I I remember the match play with you and James Neal. You remember that? Yeah, you and Neal uh, had some late nights together. I remember that. Uh, oh, they were shacking up. <laughs> But, Dude, it, uh, made yeah, but it. I remember the match play we had, and, and I felt always honored even to be in that thing because they had all these guys, and then here I was. I was always Mr. Irrelevant, the last pick of either Le, of the Mule or the Rouge. They were the captains, and I knew I was going to be last pick, so I don't care. Just get me on somewhere. And I, I provided some points. You, know. you did. You made a bomb on 18. Yeah, I did. I remember. How do you remember that? Oh, but man, I remember everything. It's hilarious. Mean, the kids. Like there were some words ex- after you made the putt. There were some words exchanged that were hilarious. Uh, I remember that too. But for you, in your industry, do you feel like social media is obviously propelling? You know, your daughter Selena. She's made a career out of out of um, broadcasting and the Penguins and commercials and all that. Mm-hmm. And she works really hard too. You see a lot of similarities here. Um, do you see a huge difference between her and you as far as getting out yourself out there in the social media world? Because that is such a big f- part of today's world. Well, yes, I do because she, she knows more how to do it than I do. I get stuck on some of these TikToks, by the way. I mean, there's a lot of editing involved with this stuff that I'm not really re- prepared for. I'm okay with the dancing part of it, but when it comes to editing it, I, I, it takes me a while. But no, I mean, I think today everyone, you can, it could be anybody. I mean, the stories are endless of people who put something on, uh, whether it's Instagram or TikTok or any place socially where people can see it and then it goes, you know, so-called viral. And next thing you know, they become, uh, you know, notable people who can, who can have a platform and do some good things if they want. And hopefully people will do good things. I think that's the one thing that sometimes bothers me about this whole social media thing is that people use it for bad intentions and bad things. So, uh, but there's a way it's different. I mean, I'm old school that way in how, in how I work. I still write on, on tablets. Yeah. By the way, I'm going to show you something that Selena left. She, she comes and uses my desk. Can you see this? Yeah. There you go. says, have a nice day, daddy. There oh you go. God. See? It still doesn't matter. So we, exchange, we exchange notes all the time. Uh, she comes in here. I'll leave her one or whatever. So she's a hard worker in a different way than, than I certainly was. I'm, I, I just go, I love covering games, telling stories about people in those games today. It's more of, um, you know, different things that are quick to, to move, you know, mm-hmm. back in the day, there weren't how many television stations were there? How many networks were there? Not many, you know, ESPN was not on the air. When I started here, we had CBS, NBC and, and ABC and that was it. So you get a bigger chunk of the pie. The business has certainly changed that way. Uh, you know, everyone's now into streaming. So all these networks have got to reinvent themselves. And 
try to figure out ways to distribute the product. The products are still good, just like newspapers. Newspapers still do good products. Unfortunately, they don't print them anymore. And for people like me who used to enjoy a printed paper, you got to find it elsewhere. And you do. Eventually, you adjust. And then your eyes go cross because you're reading it on your phone. I like reading a newspaper, Yeah, I had to too. buy some of those glasses that uh, yeah. get rid of the blue or whatever. Hey, I can't see anymore. So before Pep interrupts me, don't forget, I am, I'm a part of the host here, too, on the show, by the way. Me. Um, right. Oh, Pep's in the middle. You see that? There's a reason for that. Uh, he is like the valley of humility between two mountains of conceit. Before, tell me real quickly here, Bob, you know, and obviously I've had the p- pleasure of knowing you over the years simply because my cousin married, as you mentioned earlier, Jeff Rizella and, and that whole nine yards and got to meet your family. I remember Love- that day at Neverwood. Oh, that was a good God. wedding. It was, it was fun there. <laughs> wrecked. Yeah, that was a great time, by the way. But uh, how many shows now are you running? Because I know you got the nightly sports call. We do the number one Cochrane sports show down on Sunday nights. So I do radio. I love radio a lot because it gives you more time to talk, just like this format does in your podcast. Mm -hmm. Jason Birdies, you you can talk. And in television, you know, we don't have all that much time. You have to kind of get through the headlines of the day or whatever. And this gives you a better opportunity to not only tell your story, but see people who can look at you and say, hey, I, I... I didn't know that about him. I got more information about me or you guys. Mm-hmm. So I think I like that part of it. Pittsburgh sports, and we're going to get into golf talk here, obviously, but you know we have a huge audience in Pittsburgh. So let's talk about it here. We're we're kind of at a we're kind of at a point here where specifically the Steelers were in a pivotal point of growth, right? I mean, that's what everyone hopes that they're progressing mm-hmm. in the right direction. And unequivocally speaking, what's your opinion on where they're at right now? Uh, coaching, players, whatever. And you don't need a sound off if you don't want to, but I want to hear it from you. Oh, I, I'll, I always say what I say. I'm, I'm not necessarily a hot take guy. I'm not going to go on every day and change my mind and give you a, he needs to go, he needs to be fired. Listen, I understand the reality that they operate. and People seem to want them to change the way they are, and they operate the way they believe they should operate. Everybody's different that way. I think the NFL has changed in that back, you know, 10 to 15 years ago, you would very seldom see player trades. You'd very seldom see anything that would require trading a first, second, third round pick or whatever, uh, just because people wouldn't want to keep their own picks and develop that way. Now we're seeing in Super Bowl winners over the last several years, and you can include Philly if they win this year, they went off the rails and did something completely different with, you know, they went out and made trades. They traded for A.J. Brown. They did things that a lot of people would have said, what are you doing? I mean, that's a lot of money to give up, plus you gave up draft picks. Well, they brought in a guy who helped them. Uh, They did the same defensively when they brought in three guys on their defensive line as free agents who have helped. Um, Hassan Reddick, who was a guy, he was a disturber last two weeks ago in in their championship game against San Francisco. There are ways to do it now that go beyond just drafting, and that's it. And and so I think, you know, the Steelers still believe that what they do is the, the right way. I like what their offense is here, guys. I do. I think they got a lot of guys under the age of 26 who are going to be key contributors. Kenny Pickett, uh, you know, I wanted to wait and see before I rushed to any sort of judgment. It's still only one year, so things can happen. But he looks like he's he's developed very nicely since he played from week four on. You saw limited mistakes, better accuracy, certainly. And um, now we need to see quick strike ability, not just from him, but other people on that team, including the offensive coordinator, who need to look into that. And, you know, the NFL is full of teams that can do that to make it easier on yourself, score quickly. But the run game's in good shape. I think they got to add their offensive line. I'm encouraged if they could put together a pretty good draft and some free agent signings, they could be a really much better offense. Because you got to, to deal with Joe Burrow and all the people oh, yeah. in that division. And their defense needs help. You need an inside linebacker or two. Miles Jack, you know, people want to talk about he's okay. He's not great. He hasn't had a sack. He hasn't had a forced fumble. He hasn't had any major kind of impact play since 2020. So are you willing to bring him back at the price? Or, of course, you need to find a replacement for Devin Bush. That's Those are two very important positions. So they got a lot of stuff to do. How they do it will be something we talk about in the next six months. But... Overall, I think their their offense is in a pretty good place, considering it's manned by a lot of first and second year players. The yeah. the one thing Great. that I feel like the offense they don't have that player that can just break a game wide open. I think they do. His name's George Pickens, but they got to go to him that way, right? You know, they don't give him that opportunity. Well, so far it's a rookie. I mean, he's right. 
We'll see. I think that has to happen. I think Matt Canada knows that has to happen. And for whatever reason, they were reluctant to do it. They're also reluctant to use the middle of the field as much as I would like to see more of that because middle of the field opens things up at the sidelines. Most of their plays down the field are on the sidelines and on the sidelines mm -hmm. only. They have to be better at deep uh, slant patterns, you know, or tight ends in the middle of the field. Pat Fryer is a really good target. Use him more. Yeah. It's Which great. I saw you just did a podcast with Pat and B Big Ben, huh? Yeah. And That's Andrew McCutcheon. There you go. Yeah, Cutch we had a good back. time down there. He's back. Yeah. I he's back. We... He's looking forward to it. And um, we tried to get him out of his comfort zone. He does not like uh, beer at all. I'm not a big beer drinker either. We were at this place called Cinderlands, which is a nice place. And uh, Ben likes their beer, but um, he doesn't like their stout beer. I like stout beer. If I'm going to pick one kind of beer to drink, it would be that. I'm more of a uh, French martini wine guy. There you go. Jonathan, you probably know that. I've seen the Brian, white if you didn't, that's what I like. So you can send it my way. Yeah, the white suit that. at the Mario Lemieux event with red wine straight down the front of it. I will never forget you that. remember that? Yeah. <laughs> all freaking things. I mean, I was good all night. And then someone elbows me with uh -huh. I bought a glass of Cabernet <laughs> and I have this white suit, which it, it was a, what was it, throwback night or something. Yeah. Wasn't it? We were doing the 19... It was like a 1970s oh, or something, yeah. yeah. So I was really, I loved my outfit. I bought my outfit and I ruined my outfit all in one day because some woman elbowed me and there it went. Done. Go. Never wear white again. So, you know, I saw you uh, a couple months ago and we were staying at the pasta bar waiting for our <laughs> pasta and you mentioned something to me and I don't know if it's something that you want to mention or talk about but you threw an idea out there of a golf tournament that you'd like to put together um here in the tri-state with some of the tri-state i'm working on that currently right i am i'm so working on a match play made for television kind of thing we did it before and i want to do it again involving right. local i'm a big proponent of local tri-state pros because i think there's so many good players out there and more importantly they're very good teachers and ambassadors yeah. of the game mm -hmm. and i think they don't get enough credit for what they do uh, these are players that can compete. They're never going to compete at the PGA level. It's impossible for most people to get there. Even that, that tour is so tough. I mean, you got to shoot 66 regularly just to be, you know, mm -hmm. make cuts. Yeah. It seems. Mm -hmm. But these guys serve a big purpose in local tri-state golf, and I think uh, the pandemic has has really brought a lot of people to golf, which was one of the few things the pandemic was good for. Um, so we do that, and, and maybe tie in some celebrities too to make it a two-man kind of battle. But there's a lot that goes into that because we need to find sponsors, place to play, all these things. So it's a work in progress, but it's it, hopefully yeah. happening. You just ask Pep about planning two mans. I mean, the guy plans more two man events a year than a country club. Insane. Yeah. I mean, I do. I like my events and I like planning them. So whatever. It's also a great thing. I would tell anyone who hasn't played and is unwilling to try because it takes too long, just forget about that. Get out there and give it a whirl. You'd be, it doesn't have to be 18 holes either. No. You want to go play three Lisa, holes? I'm trying to convince her. If you want to play three holes and go and have lunch, that's fine. Five, ten, I don't care. We'll do it just to get you involved in the game. Yeah, it's it's one of those things. I made the mistake, you know, of telling her once, Ryan, this is how. Mm -hmm. I said, golf, three and a half, four hours, you're done. I shouldn't have laid that groundwork. No. I should have said what it really <laughs> was is eight hours because I you know, factor in the pregame warm-up. You have to factor in the 19th hole and then maybe the 20th hole and 21st mm -hmm. hole. And uh, it was longer. And I, it took eight hours to get back. And, and I said, I shouldn't have told you it was only that because that's just the actual time if you're lucky to play 18 holes. Normally, it's five hours around here sometimes. Yeah, it is. It's it's a long day. That's okay. I, I love it. I, you make more contacts and more friendships over golf than anything I've ever done. The only question I have about your, you know, we're, we're getting into golf, but the only question I have is like nowadays with social media, it's just, it's not even about the quality of, the information, right? It's about who can get it quicker, right? It, it's not that it's necessarily all true. Who can get it quicker out there? Well, that's a mistake. And I hate that part of it because that's how it should not be that way. We've mm -hmm. seen so many, you guys have seen it. Mm -hmm. People come out with stuff. Half the time, you don't know if it's fabricated or not. I've been duped before. I'm sure a lot of people have been duped into thinking something mm -hmm. is, and it's not the case. Right. Um, I, I find that extremely irresponsible and hurtful to people who are the subjects of some of this stuff. And I've never been a big believer in first. As long as you get it right eventually, I honestly don't think people remember who had it first mm -hmm. at the end of the day. They're just going to remember if you 
you did the right thing. And, and furthermore, I'll tell you that when it comes to dealing with people, and uh, I've tried to make this my way of doing business. I, if someone tells me something's off the record, as hurtful as that is, because I'd love to be able to go on and say something, you better make sure you, you're, you're honest with yourself and with that person. And if you do that once and you burn someone, that word travels fast and you can destroy your own career before it ever gets started. So those are things that still should remain you know, sacrosanct in this business. You shouldn't, you shouldn't run to put something out there if you're not 100% sure it's true. And you also shouldn't go with something that someone tells you is off the record. Well, and that's the thing too. Like you said, you know, Ryan and I and a couple of our friends, we, you know, we run around with some people and it's like, yeah, they're our buddies. But at the same time, you have to understand that they have a social media following or there are someone and the photos that we take with them that are goofy, et cetera. Those are our photos, right? They're not to be meant to be put on Facebook, Instagram, or, you know, maybe in a conversation, dude, look at this, look how goofy he was. That's fine. But like you said, when they say off the record, or if you're on a trip with some buddies that are someone, yeah. it stays within that, sure. that grouping. And I don't know why people are tempted to, to like, you know, compromise that you should never compromise that. It's, I always, you know, I tell people when we're out, I say, we got a code of the road. You do not talk about things that happen on air. It's yeah. between us. <laughs> yep. Truth. So let's, let's talk about your golf game. I mean, we're in Pittsburgh. Well, you, you guys are, I'm in West Virginia, but it's still the same weather. It's still depressing and gray as shit. Yeah. And when am the, I going to come down to Pikewood and play with you guys? I, I'm looking ooh, forward to that opportunity. Great to say it. And I never hear, I just, the invitations come and, and go and maybe I missed them in the mail. Well, maybe it went to your junk folder in your emails, like like our link today. But I promise could've, you, could've. <laughs> this year you are going to make that trek. You come down, and I'm going to take you, and I want you to. Well, you you played? Have you played Pikewood before? Only once, a long time ago. But okay. I don't. I I remember it was hilly and beautiful. I remember I have to get in better shape to walk that golf course. Well, That's what I thought when I was done. My goodness. Well, I I'm mark my word with you. This year, you're going to make it down here, and you're going to see it, okay. and you're going to play it, and it's going to kick both of our asses equally the same. Um, I'm okay with that. I've had I, my ass kicked a million times in my life, and that's still – it's it's he's still standing. Stronger, the ass is stronger than it's ever been because I've been beat up so much, so yeah. let's go. Yeah, it's it's an incredible work of art. I mean, it's – I don't, yeah. I don't know how to explain it. It's, it's a beautiful place. That whole That whole scenery, I don't think you'll find it better – anywhere really so i look but you, forward to that you uh yeah no definitely you, and you you talk about the area here you know even down into morgantown down the bridgeport and then up into pittsburgh it is loaded with good golf and mm. unfortunately we are at the mercy of the weather so we can't play full year year, year round but western pennsylvania is golf mecca in some regard i mean think about the classics you know fox chapel oakmont to name a few, Longview, Long Chartiers. View. View Club. Chartiers, where I, I love our place. We just had a big redo on a lot of the greens. It's going to be great this year. Swickley, Allegheny. Yeah. And Laurel Valley, to me, is one of the best golf courses in the world. And we're lucky enough to have it just, you know, 60 miles away from downtown Pittsburgh. Yeah. No, it's it's absolutely great. So, yeah, I mean, in that regard, we're, we're blessed to have that here. Um, again. Sorry about that. That's my chime that tells me someone is there's motion in front of my door. <laughs> I've heard a lot today. I don't know what's going on. Might be my... your might, might be your invite to Pikewood, but yeah, maybe. <laughs> Jeff Becker, what do you think of when you hear that name? Beer, good <laughs> beer, country club beer, nineteen oh five or is it nineteen oh three? And I'm nineteen oh three, nineteen oh three beer. We got to get one for Chartier specifically named. I'm not sure what the name would be, but I'm going to try to get on him about that. Bartkowski Ale. <laughs> He'll drink it all. It could be. <laughs> um, Bart, so my dad played, you know Bart, obviously, so he was playing down at Pete Dye, and somehow he got paired up with my dad. Oh, my God. And uh, in the two-man event. Our dads. And, oh, yeah, your dad, my dad, Barkowski, and I think, was it Noah? Noah. Yeah. And my dad said he's never seen anyone drink the amount of beer that Barkowski drank. In 18 holes of golf. Well, I've seen Jim McMahon do it 18, won a hole while playing barefoot and shooting 71. I've witnessed that because I played in his group. That guy's never a saw. cartoon character. 18, every hole I had a beer. He's nuts, Jim McMahon. And he's good. And he's good. 
I yeah, mean, so. he, barefoot, he goes everywhere. He's got fungus from the, the, uh, the on everything on the golf course, on his toes. I mean, but he is very good. He likes his beers too. I always told him, I said, I don't understand why you would go barefoot because you never know what you're going to find around here. You know, you can step on a beehive. You can you know, go into the rocks sometimes up a mystic rock. You never know what you're going to find. Rattlesnake. He says, that's why I don't intend to hit it in the rocks, Bob. Okay, good. I do. So that's why I'm not wearing, I wear I'm wearing double pants. socks. I don't wear double socks. <laughs> I don't want to get bit. Oh, no. That's great. That's like Rocco. He, my man, he goes out and plays barefooted. Practices barefooted. But again, I, what, what is the advantage in that? Why do people do that? Still don't get it. I think that it, can't because your footing, your footing would be worse if you're on a little bit of a wet, you know, slick area. I think it has something to do with balance, truthfully. It is balance. Which what does that have to do with balance? Well, I think it's here. With you know, feet Bob within the ground. <laughs> I don't understand. I still don't understand. But Bob's gonna be outside hitting <laughs> shots gonna, barefoot tonight. I walk through the newsroom barefoot. Maybe that'll be my start. You, you what time you get on air tonight? Shortly. So that shortly. We, so that means we gotta we gotta wrap it up here. <laughs> Our time is. I mean, we're 15 minutes late, two, two shot penalty. I mean, my man's already over par I was. this round because because, I was. because something happened. I couldn't receive your email. It's my fault. I I acknowledge. How no, long do your podcasts normally go? By the way, forty to forty five minutes. Yeah, but, but we wrap it up. Yeah, we we're, we know we're, how good. long have we been doing it. Uh, twenty nine. Okay, well I'll take a mulligan. I'll come back again. I'll chase bogeys. On yeah. your Chasing Birdies podcast. We'll, we'll, uh, is that a, what is that above you? That's This bird always comes around every once in a while. Um, <laughs> but we... we uh, how, many birdies so do much... you, how many birdies do you guys make in one given year, let's say? When you play enough golf? In a year? In a year. Yes. In a year. No. Oh, my God. Because my I, I can keep track of mine pretty easily. I don't make a lot of birdies. I try to play keep track golf. of that this year, bud. I did keep track last year. And that's why I'm asking. My number will be far lower than yours, but I'm just curious what your number is. I don't know. I never kept track for year-long birdies. I mean, how many rounds do you play a year? Well, that now that one that's I try like, not to keep I'm track like I'm like sixty. Sixty. Do you know how many I played last year? Not counting events where it's like scrambles <laughs> and you know, my own ball. Take a guess. Fifteen. Ten. Thirteen. It's pretty close. That's though. it. We middled um, it up. Well, you middled it up. Well, that's got to change. But I play, I play in a lot of events that you know, so I get out to do it. It's just on my own ball. And of those thirteen rounds, how many birdies do you think I had collectively? And don't play nice Four. with me. You know my game. How many? Four. Four. Jesus, that's it. You're not going to give me credit for more than four. <laughs> wow. I would say at least. You nine. didn't play nice with me. You just went after me. Four. Nine. Eight. Okay. It's not, I mean, that's not it's terrible not ratio. Less than one around, but okay. The f- I mean, I'm just you impressed like to have that you fun. Know this. That's what I'm all. I love the, the, to see Bob Pompeo at mm-hmm. a golf course. He's always smiling. He, the odds mm-hmm. are he's got white pants on. Uh, a right? Cabernet. I wanted cap- to see drink wine on a golf course. So, and I and also I took a <laughs> bottle of Cabernet to a WWE event, which was the only person probably in that entire um, PPG Paints Arena with a bottle of wine at a WWE event. That's what I like. Well, with, with with you having to go on air and being 15 minutes late, uh, see that buzz right there. That's my that's, that they're asking me. All right, yeah, we're in, we're in, going into the tap in go. segment right now. Brought to you by Betnardi Golf. It's going to be quick witted answers from you, and then we're going to have to do another episode live with you. Maybe we come to your event and we do a little uh, that'd be great little event there. We're have a fun time. We have an open bar afterwards. You can have good. It'll be natural. Segue into you know nineteenth hole, and maybe we Bingo. get uh, maybe we can get one of our buddies that's a celebrity to come play in the event and do a little interview with them on stage after. Um, good favorite Pittsburgh sports moment. Um, oh man, there have been so many. You're asking me to limit it to one. Uh, Tough question. See, I love the Stanley Cup championships being in there in Chicago and Minneapolis. Those are memories I'll never mm-hmm. forget. Um, same thing with Super Bowls. So yeah. to pick one is hard to. I'm going to say I'll pick one. James Harrison's interception return for 100 yards. There you go. Bingo. On course drink. Well, 
I would, in deference to Jeff Becker, I'm going to say what 1903, but it would have to be, if I'm going to do beer, it would be that beer. I like that beer. I've tried that beer and I like it. Uh, if it's not beer, then it'd have to be a French martini, but they don't make those on the golf course. So I have to bring my own. I'm going to find a spot for that. Most How memorable. Many people have answered that question that way. I bet not. not Zero. No. Most memorable interview. Now, this, this may catch you by surprise, only because it was only one time in my life that I did. It was Mike Tyson. Uh, he came into town as part of um, something we were doing on the radio. Um, and it was down at um, Capitol Grill. And it was one hour. It was really interesting to me, just having him there, talking to him. And he was good about everything. And I will remember that forever just because we ended it with, I asked him, I said, I know you've bitten an ear off before. Can I take a picture of you biting my ear off? Fake. Don't do it. Just a picture. And so that's a good it? picture to have. All right. it, was, it was fun. There have been a lot of great interviews, though. Last question. What are you chasing? What am I chasing my beer with? No, just <laughs> what are you chasing <laughs> in life? What am I chasing? Yeah. Happiness. I will tell you guys, you youngsters, you too. Uh, if you can chase one thing, it would be happiness and health. I mean, honestly, you're going to find this maybe strange, I guess, but I go to church every day. I go in on my own terms. I, and I take about 10 minutes and I, uh, you know, just because I've had health situations that have been scary to me, uh, and I see people my age group right now having issues. If you can be healthy and happy, you pretty much are a rich person and you should look at it that way. It's not so much about what you have. It's about what you don't need. And, and people make a big deal about material stuff. I, I, it is what it is. You, yeah, you want nice things, but honestly, if, if you don't need anything, then you're you're pretty well off. You feel like you have everything that would make you happy. So that's kind of what I chase. I chase that. I, I love awesome. that. I think that's true. Sports broadcaster of the year, my man. Congratulations on that. And yeah, he's they ran out of candidates, I guess. They, they had yeah. no choice but to land on me. So. He's throwing his sport uh. code on right now to get on air. So we're going to let like him go. Hoodie? Johnny O. Johnny O. How'd you know it was Johnny O? Oh, this guy just browses clothes every day. Yes, he knows, he knows all about Johnny O. Johnny yeah. O, good stuff. Yeah. All right, Bob. Good we stuff. can't thank all you right. enough. We're going to do it again. I'll take my them all man. again if you want to do it again. I'm sorry. I don't mean to No, you're good. Show, but I also have a to do. Yeah, we appreciate your time, my man. Really. Bob Pompiani, I love it, man. He's he's he never get he never ages, bud. We had so much fun with him. Um, just the stories, like the white suit with the red wine, hilarious. Um, and Big wine guy. I do agree with what he was saying in, in the uh, "What are you chasing?" and it is true. We all need to sometimes re rethink things out. But um, Bob, thanks for coming on, man. Um, we can't wait to tee it up with you and maybe we get your idea to come to fruition with the uh, pro Western PA pro great idea I mean I think it'd be good exposure for Western PA the pros man we got some great pros in the neighborhood yeah we um, got some great pros but I will say this you know Valentine's Day was this past Tuesday if you didn't go to Joyce's Jewelry you still have time to mosey on over there Chase and Birdies 20 on the website. Get you 20% off. Uh, they are a family-owned business. Our buddy Brandon running the show there. He's doing an incredible job. They've got everything that you're looking for. Wedding bands, engagement rings, upgraded rings, earrings, mm -hmm. pendants. I mean, ankle bracelets. What, what do you want? Yeah. Um, and then on the watch side, they're authorized dealer for Omega, Breitling, Norcane, have an incredible pre-owned uh, selection. So make sure you hit up Brandon at Joyce'sJewelry.com and Chase and Birdies 20 at checkout online. There'll be, I know for a fact, there's not too many, too many things that I'm confident about, but I know you will get the best deal at Joyce's Jewelry. Dude, I, so me, I'm a watch guy and I price watches out all the time. And I got a couple bright lanes, which by the way, I love. But honest to God, it's like, go to BK, the pricing is phenomenal. So if you're out there looking for a watch, any watch, I don't know why you would go anywhere else because you're going to get a deal. And sometimes you need a deal, especially if you're trying to save some money for the golf course. Automatic two downs, Nassau's, whatever y'all play, point games, blah, blah, blah. Great. 
I um, do. I, I do have to. Um, this is my floor right now, my man. I do have it. to take give it. an apology to Steve Peary. Oh boy! We, we, Why? We, we chirp the guy left and right. He doesn't deliver. Um, you know, we gave him a chance to order some pieces off of him, uh, which we did, and he gave me a deadline of February fifteenth. Okay, we all know, based on Steve's track record, it was not going to be here, but <laughs> it got here. It got here, in fact, on February tenth. So wow. Steve had five days to spare on his deadline that he gave me. And, um, you know, this is a new year for Steve. 2023 could be his year. Incredible, incredible uh, communication on his end. Wow. Uh, so I'm really happy to, to be on here and tell you about that. Also, Steve played golf at some uh, dinky course out in L.A. And... Uh, he had mentioned over under 79, naturally me being a dickhead. I took the over um, just because I wanted to do that. And Steve always has to set expectations around. He shot 76. Wow. wow. Hey, okay. So he, Was there he, anyone there to witness? I, he's promised me he played right. he's playing really well right now. Right. So, Steve, I'm really happy for you, bud. I'm happy that your game's in the place that it needs to be. I'm happy that you're delivering on timelines that you've been saying you're going to deliver on. I'm happy for you, bud. Hey, Peering, uh, just keep the game good till September, right? But I don't care what happens after that. Uh, th those jackets do look good. We, I know we won't talk about them now, but uh, pretty good stuff. Peering, we do love you, bud. Uh, and the, I love this. I, the jackets are incredible. I cannot wait for you to get it. It's incredible. Mm -hmm. So, guys, the uh, next episode of Chasing Birdies falls into the great month of March, and that means that we are one month closer to opening day in southwest PA, north central West Virginia. It is almost golf season, guys. We're going to do a little bit of a golf event in the Pittsburgh area, I believe, on March 14th up at uh, X Golf in Wexford, potentially. Um, so be on the lookout for that. But um, good stuff, man. And... Uh, Excited for the next episode here on Chasing Birdies. We always appreciate you, you listening and, you know, sharing, really. Chasing underscore birdies, Instagram, like, love, listen, um, chasingbirdies.com. We appreciate your support as always. Uh, thank you to Holderness and Born for outfitting the boys. We really appreciate it. And, bud, um, be careful on the slips, right? Like, yeah, we have I'm, I'm, in two weeks, bud. Like, let's get, not fuck off too much. Uh, I know, I know. Getting ready to go shred it up a little bit, boys. But uh, thank you to Evo and his team over at Simpler Media for putting this thing together. You guys rock. Jacqueline and Rachel for all your social media help. We're going to try to give you some better content in this coming year. Other than that, my man, I'll catch you guys on the flip side.